Ken Pyle with VOD TV at the Parks Associates uh, Connections Conference at CTIA. We're with Rafael O'Day of Wellness and Prevention, a Johnson & Johnson company. So it's really interesting that you know, Johnson & Johnson, I, I look at it as a kind of a, a retail brand, a consumer brand, but you've got this company called Wellness and Protection. Prevention. Why don't you tell us about that, and then we'll have a conversation from there. Sure. So um, we're a, a newer portion of the Johnson & Johnson company. Um, we are primarily focused, as the name would suggest, on wellness and prevention services. So we actually provide um, solutions that include a core offering that are our digital health coaching solutions that cover a broad spectrum of the care continuum. So we provide services or programs that are relevant to lifestyle management, things like nutrition, weight loss, those kinds of things, along with um, chronic disease management um, can, uh, programs and behavioral health programs such as areas of depression, insomnia, and binge eating. That's fascinating. So, it, you know, when I first heard the name, I kept thinking of senior and aging in place type of applications, but clearly this is across a whole spectrum of ages and, and persons. Exactly, exactly. Our, our programs are actually based on technology that was um, pioneered by Vic Strucker at the University of Michigan. He did quite a bit of research in behaviorally based um, interventions and understanding how personalization or what we call tailoring impacts change. So helping people to really get a change plan that is specific to them, much like they would do in a face-to-face -face kind of situation with a, a counselor or coach, they are um, taken through a consultation on the web and the program then develops a highly personalized plan for them to deal with whatever condition they're there to, to treat. So that's interesting. So from the very beginning, it's a uh, online experience. It's not face-to-face -face like this. Yes, exactly. So it's really to provide effective and scalable care, primarily for people who today may not be getting the kind of care or treatment that they need to. And it's accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's really within the comfort of your own home. Um, and oftentimes what we find specifically around things like behavioral health issues, potentially depression, you might have people who feel a certain sense of stigma and so may not be going to see their primary care provider, but then have access to programs where they could start to deal with some of those symptoms. Well, I imagine too, I mean, this just brings up a whole host of questions, but one of the first ones is uh, a lot of our audience, uh, rural areas, right? And where you just don't have those resources. I'd imagine that's a big area of um, uh, opportunity. Yeah, um, so certainly what we find in psychological care, oftentimes, for instance, as just one example, um, specialty care. For instance, I'm going to go back to the example of depression. There are many more like this. But clinical um, psychologists who specialize in depression are far and few between. And the reality is there are many more people who could really benefit from some level of treatment. Many people might have sub-threshold depression, so they're not going to be diagnosed by their primary care physician. As a matter of fact, we have data from our HRA of over 1.3 million participants that show us that approximately 16% of people suffer from some level of th sub-threshold depression. And so they're not going to be captured by a PCP visit necessarily because they're not really going to be diagnosed. So the point is that you, people who may be struggling with some of these symptoms but may not not be diagnosed um, are still struggling in many other areas of their life and could really benefit from programs like this. And again, depression is one example. Certainly there are other things like weight management, nutrition, physical activity, and then um, more of your condition-based or um, disease management programs such as pain or chronic conditions or diabetes, hypertension, those kinds of things. But they're all really based on the idea that you would have scalable, efficacious solutions that people have access to from their home. Yeah, so you take away a lot of the friction of having to get in your car, having to find someone first, having uh, to get in the car and, and go to it. Yes, and they're all based on clinical guidelines. So the interventions are written with clinical guidelines in mind, of course, um, and they have proven outcomes. Now, it's interesting, and um, again, a lot of questions to ask, but uh, just the fact that Johnson & Johnson is behind this, it seems like that's a huge stamp of uh, credibility for the marketplace. I think Johnson & Johnson has always, obviously, as a healthcare organization, um, cared very deeply about the wellness of the community, their consumers. Um, and I think this is just another way that they can say health and wellness, wellness and prevention is something that we are um, extremely dedicated to, and this is just one more way to provide services. Now, from a 
payment standpoint? Um, is this the type of thing where insurance programs are you know, covering it, or how does that work? So we have two, two markets, it's a great question. We primarily sell either to the employer market or the health plan market, um, depending on either side. Um, we either provide an integrated solution that could incorporate things like telephonic, um, coaching, and other offerings on the employer side if employers are looking for a wellness solution, more of a, um, a program that they can plug into their system and start running with. Um, and in the health care side or the health plan side, um, we generally provide similar services, but recognizing that we're usually plugging into a larger solution that includes their primary care providers, nurse clinicians, care coordinators, and all those things. So we have ways to actually integrate with those systems to be able to provide data back to the individuals that need it, who may be helping to either triage or manage care of individual patients and individuals. Well, so from a um, perspective of the technology, um, you mentioned telephonic, which, you know, I, I'm thinking how much does, you know, the face-to-face -face via the web, uh, how much value does that add to uh, some of these um, treatments or prevention programs? So it's not really a face-to-face -face interaction over the web. I just want to clarify. Okay. It actually is a, um, it's a, a con we start with what we call a consultation. It asks a series of questions that are both condition-specific, but really get also into the psychological constructs that are necessary for us to understand in order to be able to provide an intervention that will create change, right? So we deal with things like confidence and motivation, um, building self-efficacy, and then also individual barriers that are standing in the way of someone making change. So what we oftentimes will talk about is that most people know that they either need to make some change, they, they're usually looking for ways to do that, but many people don't have the tools and skills that they need to be able to actually manage the change that they're wanting to make. And that's highly personalized, right? So my barriers for certain behaviors may be very different than somebody else's, and so the programs account for that difference. That being said, um, we usually work together, hand in hand, with someone like a telephonic coach um, in order to really just augment care, right? It's really to sort of set up a care um, system where people have access when they need access to the right kind of information, and we believe that cohesively working together is probably the best mechanism for people to get the right kind of care. Well, imagine, too, um, the way you've described it, you have uh, the anonymity. People probably feel like they're not necessarily giving up information that they don't want the world to hear. Right. And the, the web-based applications are um, private, they're confidential, and so that allows for a layer of anonymity that I believe certainly from a stigma perspective um, could be really valuable for individuals who may not want to disclose that they have sort of, a, you know, whether it's depression like I was talking about before or some other condition that they might feel stigmatized to sort of be broadcasting, if you will. So from a technology standpoint, you know, back to the technology, um, what sort of uh, sensors and mobile devices, how is that playing into how you're uh, fulfilling your role? So we are certainly, today, um, you can access our programs either through the web or through a tablet. They're not optimized for mobile today because, quite frankly, the consultations that you go through are fairly in-depth, okay. and so it's probably hard to consume over a mobile device today. Um, we have been working to utilize more mobile technology for things like reminder systems where we believe mm -hmm. that um, reminders that are oftentimes also set up by the individual can be the most meaningful ways to motivate an individual. So it's really to augment, again, our programs and the goals that somebody might set as part of the programs and then have them potentially give themselves reminders when it might be particularly tough for them. So those are just some of the ways that we've been thinking. Well, it sounds like, though, uh, there's still a lot of opportunity for everyone as far as the health and prevention uh, category. Absolutely. I think um, certainly with the ACA coming the next affordable, year, affordable health care, care act, <laughs> um, really going into full force in 2014, I think we'll see a lot more accountability both on the individual and then also on the health care system. Um, so from that perspective, I do see that there's huge opportunity to really start to work collaboratively to try to help change what today is an ever increasing healthcare crisis. Um, and so I do think that the marketplace um, really is going to be open for these kinds of innovations that can help pay people make lasting and sustainable behavior changes around some of these conditions. 
And it sounds like um, making things more efficient, uh, better outcomes, but also um, you know for for maybe less cost. Yeah, absolutely. So the the scalability and the efficaciousness of these kinds of programs, I think, are very promising um, because I do believe that they will be able to overcome some of the potential barriers that are going to be faced as we come up against, you know, the ACOs and those kinds of things where there's going to be accountable care organizations, <laughs> um, where, again, there's going to be greater accountability on all ends. And so really engaging um, the individuals to take ownership and accountability for their care uh, in a positive way, in, in a way where they feel a certain sense of choice and control over their lives, I think is going to be a very positive thing. Yeah, giving them the tools to manage it. So. Absolutely, giving them the tools to manage it. Well, Raphael, I really appreciate your time. It's nice Thank to meet you. you. Thank you.